Okay, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. My name is Vishnu Dutt, and in this class, we are going to learn uh, some of the basics required for OSPF, BGP, and MPLS. So the course is still the same. The course is OSPF, BGP, and MPLS from scratch to design. And we are at the session number four of this class, of this course, you can say. Right. So from last two classes, the agenda is actually same, right? And you know what we are doing. We are uh, solving or we are trying to break down a complex problem, which is routing. And we got some of the uh, cool concepts out of it. Means when we break it, we got five or six different um, uh, puzzles and we are solving them puzzles one by one. So we are done with the subnetting. We are done with the TCP IP layering. We are also done with the address resolution protocol, which was pretty interesting. We talked about communication inside a particular network. We talked about what is going to happen when two hosts are in totally different network. We need a router which does not forward an address resolution protocol packet from an address, from an, uh, uh, from a network to the another network, but it can generate the R, right? We know about it. Now, uh, we have also completed next hop concept, which was again pretty interesting that we have, we have a switch, we does not count it as a next hop, and why you understand the meaning. We, you understand the meaning of time to live also. We are going to talk about routing table today, which is one of the most important concept. If you if you ask me, we are going to discuss uh, what is your control plane and data plane, where exactly uh, these pieces are, what they do, and why they are so important. Right? If time permits, basically, and 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 I deliberately want to introduce one more concept uh, in here. Uh, when we are going to discuss routing table, and that is the concept of uh, uh, virtual routing or the virtual router. What is the meaning of virtual router and why we are including this concept at this early stage? Because I want to make sure that when we reach MPLS, when we reach to BGP, uh, there shouldn't be an issue because routing table, we can understand. We understand that if we have a switch, right, at layer two, we can divide this switch into multiple switches, right? And every uh, switch part, whatever we are getting, it is going to be your VLAN. So can we do that at a router level or at layer three? Can we create multiple routers from a single router, right? And that is where your virtual routing or the virtual router concepts come into picture. If time permits, we are going to talk about layer two multicast, right? But whenever I say if time permits, generally time doesn't permit, right? So I hope everybody to be on mute. Uh, I could see Satish ji are not on mute. So it is a request from you, uh, from my side that please be on mute. Mr. Satish Kumar P. Okay. So having said that, let's move to the first board. And here you go. So this is the board which keeps us, uh, 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 what we can say, uh, which let us know that where exactly we are uh, with respect to routing and what we have learned, what we are going to do, right? So as I mentioned that basically we are uh, breaking a complex problem of routing into multiple pieces and we are learning those multiple pieces one by one you all know that we are pretty good in IP subnetting now. We know what is next hop. We also know what is address resolution protocol and we know TCP IP layering. Till now, we have we are done with the four pieces out of six pieces, right? When we complete these two pieces, two more pieces, then what we are going to do, we are going to take an example uh, of maybe static routing, dynamic routing doesn't matter, but we are going to take this example and you will be amazed to see that if you know all these things, that example is going to be a piece of cake for you. Okay. Having said that, let's talk about 
the concept of routing table. So I want your uh, complete attention on this board and the next board, right? And this is very, very simple. So what we have here in this board is we have a green network and I have made this network a pretty general network. The network number is x dot x dot x dot 0 slash 24. And if I say I am again repeating is because I want these things to be in your mind permanently. Okay. So if I talk about x dot x dot x dot 0 slash 24, you all know that the network bits are 24. Host bits are only 8. It means that you can create 2 to the power 8 host from it. Right. I have showcased you only four hosts in this network, which is this one, this one, this one, and this one. No problems with respect to this type. So I can say, although this network can have 256 hosts, but I have showcased you only four of them. And this router there has an interface FA0 slash zero into this network. And generally this router becomes the default gateway for this network. What is the meaning of default gateway or the gateway or uh, basically a router uh, 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 which is connected into this network? The meaning is if this host, maybe this host say is A and it wants to communicate to any other network, right? Then basically it needs to send its own IP packet first towards this gateway and then gateway is going to forward it, right? So basically we have three networks here and I have kept it pretty general, means I have written x dot x dot x. You can write any network number uh, in place, means uh, if you want to replace this x. So I have, I am, I'm doing pretty general thing here. Then we have another network in which there are three hosts, although there could be 256 hosts in this network, which is y dot y dot y dot zero slash 24, right? This is the orange network and we have another network here, which is the gray network, right? This network basically has only two hosts, which is connected to another router, which is R2. And then R1 and R2 are connected over a link. And then basically over this link, we have another network, which is 168, sorry, 192.168.10.0. All the networks except this one has slash 24, right? And this network is having slash 30, right? So if I talk about this network slightly more, what is the meaning of slash 30? The meaning of slash 30 is whatever the number we write after this slash, it is your network number, right? Or network bits. We all know. What are that host bits? Host bits are only two. If host bits are only two, then how many hosts we can have? Two to the power two, it means that four, as simple as that, right? What those numbers are going to be? The numbers are going to be 192.168.10.0. This is going to be the first one. Dot one is going to be the second one. Dot three is going to be the third one and dot four is going to be the fourth one. It is as simple as that. I think I have made a mistake. Here dot two and last one is dot three. So the first address is going to be your uh, network number, which we generally do not use. And the last number is going to be your broadcast network. So only two IP addresses remains. And I am not talking about slash 31 here. And there is a specific reason. We are going to talk about it. Do not worry. But for, we are we are discussing here general routing. So in general routing on point-to-point -point interfaces, generally we use slash 30, right? And dot one and dot two are the only IP addresses which could be assigned out of this network. It is as simple as that. We all know about it. And that is why you can see at R1's FA0 slash 2 interface, I have make sure that we have an IP address here, dot one. If I say dot one here, the IP address is 192.168.10.1. And if I say dot two is assigned to R2's interface, it means 
that 192, 168.10.2 is assigned. Now, what exactly I'm doing here is over these interface, which interfaces, FA0 slash 1, FA0 slash, uh, sorry, 0 slash 0, FA0 slash 1, and FA0 slash 2, I am assigning an IP address. What I do, I log into this router. I go to FA0 slash 0 interface and I say, your IP address is something from this range, right? And generally, the router gets the first IP address or the last IP address from the subnet. So, if I talk about this subnet, the first IP address is going to be x dot x dot x dot 1 slash 24, right? And I have assigned that IP address over this FA0 slash 0 interface, right? So, router is thinking that, okay, my one of my interface, which is FA0 slash 0, is part of this network, which network? X dot X dot X dot 0 slash 24. And it can calculate it easily, right? Because X dot, if you see the network number, if you see the host number, this router, if you can calculate that, uh, believe me, router can easily calculate that now F is 0 slash 0 is part of X dot X dot X dot 0 slash 24, or it can say that X dot X dot X dot 0 is connected to my FA 0 slash 0 interface. It is as simple as that, right? Similarly, I am going to uh, into FA 0 slash 1 interface and I say I am assigning an IP address which is Y dot Y dot Y dot 1, which is the first IP address of y dot y dot y dot 0 slash 24. It is as simple as that. And now, as soon as I give this IP address to FA0 slash 1 interface of the router, router understand that, okay, I am part of y dot y dot y dot 0 network. It, it is as simple as that, right? Similarly, I'm going to assign the IP address on FA0 slash interface, which is dot 1, which means the routers is also connected to a slash 30 network, which is 192.168.10.0, right? As simple as that. We are mostly going to talk about this router R1 here. So R1 is connected to three different networks, right? And that is what it is thinking. So if I talk about what is going into this router's mind, right? Which router's mind? R1's mind. Actually, whatever is it, it is learning, it is thinking about it, right? It is going to straight away say that x dot x dot x dot 0 is connected to me. Or I can say it is directly connected to me. It is as simple as that. Right? But along with that, it creates a table. Interesting, right? You all know that switch also creates a table in which there are MAC addresses and interfaces. So router, whatever it is seeing, whenever I go log into this router and configure this IP address, what IP address on FA0 slash 0, if I configure x dot x dot x dot 1, it is going to say that x dot x dot x dot 0 slash 24 subnet is directly connected to me and this subnet is reachable via FA0 slash 0 interface, right? And along with that, in this table, it is going to write a uh, letter, which is C. I am not specifying that this is going to be a routing table structure. No, I am just talking about pretty general thing. You should understand it, that what is going inside the router's mind. And it is going to be very, very simple, right? What this C is, C is saying connected, means directly connected. This router, uh, this subnet, x dot x dot x dot 0 slash 24 is directly connected or can be reachable via FA0 slash 0. It is as simple as that. C means connected, right? It is going to again write the same thing for y dot y dot y network, right? Let's write it down. y dot y dot y dot 0 slash 24 reachable via FA0 slash 1. This is again the connected route, right? Satish ji, if I think you are not on mute, let me mute you. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
last thing right which is 192.168.10.0 slash 30 is reachable over fa 0 slash 2 interface it is as simple as that right all of these routes are directly connected so router is thinking about them it is creating a table it means that router can fill its table on the basis of whatever information it has right now I have logged into, to, into this router and configured the IP address on these interfaces. And believe me, after we are done with the configuration, router has created this table, right? And generally we call this as a route table, a routing table. It is as simple as that. Now, what is going to happen? Suppose this host A wants to communicate to host B and host B in the network orange these two networks are directly connected what is going to happen host a is going to create definitely the ip packet the ip packet source address may be this host is dot 10 the 10th host in the subnet x dot x dot x dot 0 so the host uh, so the source address is going to be x dot x dot x dot 10 the destination may be this is again 10 the 10th host in the network y dot y dot y dot 0 so the destination is going to be y dot y dot y dot z uh, 10 right it is as simple as that and this is going to be your ip packet you all know that what is going to happen first thing first is this host is going to see that it is not talking to a host inside its own network it is talking to a host inside the different network and it is the host responsibility to send the ip packet towards the router right and we all learned to uh, uh, about it in the in, in our last class right so this is going to be my ip packet and this IP packet is going to be forwarded towards the R1. And how? You all know about it. You are going to do the R for the default gateway. You are going to put source MAC address, destination MAC address. But I am not going into that detail because you all know about it. The whole sole point is this IP packet, the yellow one, is going to reach to R1, right? R1 is checking its red part. Red means it is uh, going to check its so destination MAC address and it is going to see that, yes, this packet is for me because destination MAC address is of interface FA0 slash 0. And if that is the case, router is going to make sure that it gets the IP packet out of it, right? And now inside the IP packet, it's going to see the destination IP address is y dot y dot y dot 10. And it is going to consult its routing table because router's main job is to take IP packet from one interface and switch them as soon as possible to the other interface if it knows about the route. And interestingly, this packet is going wants to go to y dot y dot y dot zero and we or this router has this route that if you want to reach to y dot y dot zero because we are going to uh, this packet wants to go to y dot y dot y dot 10 which is the 10th host of this network this router has this information right that y dot y dot y dot zero is network is connected via fa zero slash one interface so what it is going to do it is going to take this IP packet and it is going to forward this IP packet onto this interface because it knows that the complete network is connected to it and y dot y dot y dot 10 is part of this network. So I need to forward it into this orange network. It is really, really simple. Right? But as you all know that it cannot place all uh, this this IP subnet over this white link because it's an Ethernet link and that is where router is going to do the R, right? Very simple. We all know about it. Now, let's talk about a network which is not directly connected to this router and the network is the gray network which is Z dot Z dot Z dot zero. So now consider if, uh, a point when this host a this one with the ip address x dot x dot x dot 10 wants to communicate to an host in z dot z dot z dot zero network maybe this host is z dot z dot z dot 10 okay maybe the host name is host c 
what is going to happen again host a is going to create the ip packet the ip packet source is going to be x dot x dot x dot 10 the destination is going to be y dot y dot y dot 10 not y this time it is going to be z dot z dot z dot 10 as simple as that you all know the host a is going to forward this packet to its default gateway because it is talking to a network which is which, uh, because it is talking to a host which is not part of its own network and that is why it is going to send this packet again this yellow packet towards the router again the R process everything is going to happen router is going to extract this IP packet and see that the net destination address is z dot z dot z dot 10 and interestingly in its routing table it is not going to see that because routing table till now contains only the connected routes because router is not intelligent enough to know every route on its own we need to do something right and now what i am doing is i am logging into this router r1 and i say that if you want to reach z dot z to dot z dot zero slash 24 i am manually configuring this route into this router what is the meaning of configuring route? The meaning of configuring route is I am literally saying R1, right? By logging into its command line that if you want to read Z dot Z dot Z dot zero slash 24, you can reach it via a router, which is R2 over your interface zero slash two. Interesting, right? What is this R2? Instead of basically I have written R2 here, but at the at the back, R2 doesn't uh, uh, sounds an IP address. So just make sure that R2 means here 192.168.10.2, which is the IP address configured on this interface. Right. And router is going to whenever I do this, router is going to write a little s just adjacent to this route and what is the meaning of this s the meaning of this s is that you have manually configured a route in the router r1 and you call this route as the static route it is as simple as that right previously when this route was not there this IP packet was dropped. It is uh, router is going to drop this packet because it does not have any route with respect to Z dot Z dot Z dot 10, right? I'm talking about if you do not specify this static route, but you have specified. Router's working is going to be again same. It is going to look into its routing table now. It does not find the route in its connected routes. It is going to see that there is a static route which is z dot z dot z dot zero and if i want to send this packet to the gray network i have to send it first towards the r2 right so i can say that if this router wants to communicate to this device here first it needs to send the packet to r2 and on what instruction it is doing it because I have manually configured the router R1 with this static route. It is as simple as that, right? Now to send it to R2, again, the process is going to be same. A router R1 needs to put this IP packet into this, uh, uh, on, on this white link. And this white link is the ethernet link. It means that router has to generate a source mac or has to write source mac and destination mac for this ip packet and you all know what is the process because source mac is anyhow is going to be the mac address of fa0 slash 2 interface maybe that is a colon a colon a suppose right not a maybe that is uh, 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 that is d colon d colon d suppose it is going to write it here and the problem is again same and you know the solution for this problem the destination mac is not known by this router but it knows the ip address 
where it needs to send this IP packet, right? And that is where it is going to do the ARP for dot two, right? 192.168.10.2, which is the next hop IP address. And it is going to get the MAC address associated with this dot two interface. And that might be say E colon E colon E. That is going to be writing, we are going to write here. So just try to understand when this packet comes here, it had different source and destination MAC address, right? When we are sending it uh, towards R2, it is going to have different source and destination MAC address, right? Previously at step number one, when this host generated this packet, the source is going to be the source MAC is going to be the MAC address of host A and destination is going to be the FA0 slash zero interface MAC address, right? But now, just pay close attention. The source address is going to be the dot one, which is FA0 slash two MAC address. And the destination address is going to be dot two, which is MAC address of the router R2 interface, right? But here is the thing. The IP packet is never changed with respect to its content, with respect to source IP and destination IP, right? It is same when it reaches to R1. It is it is going to be same when it reaches to R2 also, right? And I'm talking about and I'm talking about general routing. I am not taking into consideration of NAT. I am presuming there is no NAT. NAT has the capability to change source and IP address of the packet, but we are not talking about it. If NAT is on not in the picture, then basically we are talking about that there is the source IP address and destination IP address of the packet is not going to be changed, right? What is changed? The source MAC and the destination MAC. Where exactly it is changed? At every hop it is going to be changed because here, if we are talking about communication between A to C from gray network to uh, 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 green network, basically we are having two routers in the middle we have discussed about R1. R1 is going to be the first hop of this packet, and that is where it is going to reduce the DTL value from 254 to 253, maybe, if the value is 254. Now, let's talk about R2. At R2, it is going to be the same process. R2 is going to be the second hop between this these two hosts, host A and host C, right here, right? So this IP packet is now a complete frame is going to reach to R2. R2 is going to see the destination MAC address belongs to me. It is going to take out this IP packet out of it. And then it is going to see what is exactly my destination IP address, which is Z dot Z dot Z dot zero, sorry, 10, right? And this router, if I talk about this router routing table, it is going to have the connected route for Z dot Z dot Z dot zero. Also, it is going to have the connected route for 192.168.10.0. But I am talking about this. This is the connected route for this router. Believe me, the same route was static route in routers R1 routing table. But R2 has directly connected. So I have written C here, and it could be reachable over this router's interface. Maybe this is zero slash two, right? And now, again, you all know if this router needs to send this packet to his, this host C, which is having IP address Z dot Z dot Z dot 10, it is going to do an R for knowing the MAC address of this right, right? You all know about it. And similarly, this router R2 is going to remove this, add another MAC address, this time the MAC source MAC address is going to be the so IP address of this guy and the destination MAC address is the IP address of this guy because it is going to get the IP address of C from R. It is as simple as that. So just try to understand the packet is going hop by hop and it is consulting, consulting using its routing table. It is as simple as that, right? Now, I would like to complete this process, the hop by hop, by taking another example. Suppose what we are doing here is we are having a router R1 here, right? We are having R2 here. We are having R3 here. And then basically we are having R4, 
R5, R6, right? We have a connected host here, maybe host A. We have a connected host here, maybe host B. And then we have a links between them. We have drawn its typical network, right? And what is going, what is happening here is host A wants to communicate to host B, right? It has created an IP packet for host B. I'm not writing the destination and source IP address, but try to understand this IP packet is going to have the source and destination IP address. And then we are going to have this L2 piece where we are going to write the MAC address. So this is my L2. This is my L3. It is generated by this host. You all know what this L2 is going to contain. L2 is going to contain the source MAC address of this guy and the destination MAC address of this guy. The packet is going to reach here, right? Here, basically what is going to happen, this router is going to see the TTL value. It is going to decrease the TTL value. For, suppose the TTL value when start in the IP packet, it was 254. When this packet, and I am presuming that every router has the routes, right? Or you have statically defined. When this packet reach here, router R1 is going to see its route table. There must be some route table. It is going to see the, what is the destination IP address there. It is going to see the destination IP address and it will find that to send this packet towards B, it needs to send this packet towards R2, right? So again, basically this packet in this in transit, we have the, we are going to have the same IP address and, des uh, uh, and destination source IP and destination, uh, sorry, uh, source IP and the uh, destination IP are going to be same, but what is going to change this L2? This time the L2 is going to be, or the MAC address is going to be source, uh, source MAC address is this one, destination MAC address is this one, no problem, right? Packet reaches here, again R2 is going to consult this routing table, it is going to see all these entries, if it finds the entries, it is going to send again this packet here, again the IP packet is going to be same, what is going to uh, uh, be different? This L2. This time L2 source IP address is going to be this one. And the destination, sorry, destination MAC address, source MAC address is going to be this one. Destination MAC address is going to be this one, right? So just try to understand, hop by hop, IP packet is going to remain same, but L2 header is going to be rewrite or it is going to be changed, right? After consulting with the routing table. Now, what these routers are doing, it is again decreasing the TTL value by one. So at this router, the TTL value is going to be, uh, suppose A, it was 255. Here it is going to be 254. Here it is going to be 253. What is going to happen at router three? Router three is going to see that there are two paths to reach B. One is this one, one is this one, right? And now, this router is also intelligent enough to understand and you can program this router. Uh, and if you consider this uh, yellow as the roads, maybe the upper road is having from the distance between R3 and R4 is 10 kilometers. And distance between R4 and R6 is five kilometers, right? So to reach R3 to R6, it is going to be 15 kilometers, right? But on the lower path, it is going to be say, uh, it is going to be say, uh, maybe 15 plus 5. Which path is efficient in terms of kilometers, right? In terms of distance, the upper path. So R3 has decided to move on to this upper path and basically, uh, again, R3 is going to consult its routing table. It is going to find two routes to reach B, right? One is via R4 and one is via R5 router is intelligently taking the decision that it the r4 is the way to go forward because it is having the lowest kilometers and that is where basically this ip packet is going to be delivered to r4 because it is going to be the next stop again if you talk about the l2 part this time the l2 source mac address is going to be this i uh, this mac address and the destination is going to be this mac address right as simple as that what R4 is going to do, R4 is again going to see its routing table. There is so many things written here. It is seeing this packet destination IP address and it will find that to reach B, it is going to forward to R6. And along the way, it is going to reduce the TTL value by one. Previously, 
it was 200 and uh, so here it was 253 when out router r3 did its routing it is going to be 252 here basically it is going to be 251 as simple as that right 254 253 252 251 and when r6 get this ip packet here right here right of course the source is going to be uh, the R4 interface MAC address, this one, and the destination is going to be R6 interface address, uh, sorry, MAC address, this one. And now R6 is going to have this connected route, so it is going to move this packet from here to here. It is as simple as that, right? So this is basically hop by hop processing. Router at every stage is consulting to its routing table. It finds the next stop forward the packet after doing R. So at every hop, only source MAC and destination MAC or L2 gets changed. Nothing happens to the IP address. So it's all about 35 minutes we have been discussing this routing table. Guys, if you have any doubt, I would like to take pause for two minutes here. Unmute yourself and ask your question. Now I could see Vishnuji have one question. Please, Vishnuji, please do ask your question. Hi, good morning, sir. So uh, my question today is, uh, how is this router manages this MAC address table? Because uh, when we take switches, if you see this show MAC address table, then uh, it would take interface against which it would mark the MAC address. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But let us assume the same scenario in R1. Mm -hmm. um, it cannot it cannot take the MAC address um, um, on the learned interface. Right? For example, um, if I want to send packet out of this FA0 slash 2, mm -hmm. I should know the MAC address of the other end. Absolutely. The dot 2 IP address. On the so, so how is this uh, uh, management happening? There? See, uh, your question is fantastic, but there is a little gap in the understanding. Switches working, uh, as you know, that switches only understand MAC addresses. So they create a CAM table there where they have this entry that if you want to go to do this MAC address, go to this interface, right? Router does not maintain that CAM table. Router is behaving just like any IP host, right? And what does an IP host does when it needs to find out dot two? So for example, if I talk about R1 right here, your question is, could you be please on mute? Uh, Vishnuji. Sure, sure. Yeah. So just try to understand your question that we had this IP packet, right? And if you want to send this IP packet towards dot two, which is the next stop of the R1, we do not know the MAC address, right? This was your question. So for that, R1 does not need to maintain a CAM table, right? It can straight away do an R. I have told you that router is not going to send R from green network to any other network because it breaks that path, right? But router can generate an R just like this host, right so basically they are not maintaining the cam table they are just maintaining this r table in which they are it is this router r1 is going to say who is dot 2 who is 192.168.10.2 means if i ask who is 192.168.10.2 just give me the mac address and that is the responsibility of address resolution protocol so r1 can generate r message and that is why there is a ARP table in the router. It is not the CAM table uh, though, right? Whenever router needs to go to this dot two, it just does an ARP. Did you get your answer, Vishnuji? Yeah, 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 sure, uh, sir. Okay, in that aspect, so um, can I safely assume that uh, L3 switch will have CAM and um, ARP table both, but a router will only have a ARP table? Is you, it, is a, you, your understanding is absolutely correct. Okay, all right, sir. Now, now, now it is clear. And one other question: um, uh, Can you please move to the right slide that you were showing with the six routers? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, we were um, thought now that R three will check for the best route to R six, mm -hmm. either on the R four path or R five path. Mm -hmm. Now, the example we have taken is the distance. Um, um, the upper part is like 15 kilometers apart and the lower part is like 20 kilometers apart. 
So in a practical example, does a router differentiate based on a distance or it is just for understanding purpose? We, took we are definitely going to go uh, deeper into this regard. I have just taken an example where I have, I have explained you on the basis of this distance or the metric. Definitely we are going to go into deeper in this. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Burak, uh, what's your question? Okay, thank you, Vishnu. Uh, is uh, PBR, policy-based routing, uh, changing the uh, source IP address of the uh, packet? Uh, I think uh, the answer is no. Uh, I think it should be uh, changing uh, just the MAC address of the uh, uh, packet, right? Not MAC address. Basically, a policy-based routing, although we are going to discuss about it, but if I give you a brief idea, right? Generally, the routing behave, uh, the routers behave, whenever it gets an IP address, it is going to see the routing table. It forwards on the basis of routing table, right? And interestingly, this behavior is just dependent on the destination IP, means what is the destination IP? I'm going to forward the packet on the basis of that. But if you want, some different behavior than that if you do not want that router should see its routing table and take the decision then policy based routing comes into picture it can change the next hop of uh, for example it can straight away say that okay uh, this guy has taken the upper path right here but what i want for some specific packets maybe for five packets which are coming from host a towards host C, right? Then I want to take the uh, direction of this packet, right? Uh, sorry, the lower path. Then basically what we want is for those specific pa uh, uh, packets, I do not want to see in the routing table, but I am going there and manually configuring this router that if you want to do that, just do this, uh, just do this for, uh, 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 means instead of choosing R4 as the next gateway for such kind of packet, you should take R5, but we are going to discuss about PBR in detail also somewhere. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so anybody else is having any question or shall we move to our next board? I yeah, just, just one question. Uh, okay. uh, so uh, does it mean that uh, policy based routing is uh, source based? No. Uh, you are, no, 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 uh, you, you are right. Actually, I got confused. Yes, basically you are taking the decision on the basis of source that if, and basically it is not only on the basis of source, it can be other parameters. For example, you can do the uh, PBR on the basis of uh, uh, packet length or any IP parameter uh, to, uh, means uh, to be on the safer side. Maybe you can say that if this IP packet is having these DSCP value, do not take this next stop, take the other, uh, other way around. But your observation is correct. So please. Okay. okay. Thank you. So now let's move towards the control plane and data plane and i made a mistake here it should not the spelling should be this one right so <clears throat> again i want another 15 to 20 minutes of yours a complete attention because most of the people has this problem in understanding the concept of control plane and data plane right so generally i show router using uh, this circle right but believe me whatever i have sh i am showcasing you in this green rectangular box actually it is your router r1 which r1 this r1 okay we are going to see inside this router and try to find out where exactly the control plane and where is the data plane and what exactly those are okay so suppose this interface is fa0 slash 1 this one right and this interface 0 slash 2 this one 
you can argue with me that why Vishnu you haven't drawn it in the rectangular box and the reason is I want to write more information and I find that rectangle means if I write in the rectangle uh, in the circular box uh, I am I was getting little bit less space okay so here basically I have showcased the router R1 using this rectangular box and we have two interfaces FA0 slash 1 and FA0 slash 2 and if you take a consideration of this uh, uh, this router uh, this network here at R3 we have a network which is z.z.z.0 slash 24 and I am pretty interested in knowing that how the router R1 is going to forward this message, right? So basically, a, and there is an IP packet which is coming over this interface, FA0 slash 1, right? This is the packet. The source may be anything. It is x dot x dot x dot x. But the destination is going to be any uh, host inside this network, orange network. And I am presuming it is dot 10. So suppose there is a host here, little host and its IP address is dot 10, right? I am interested in knowing that how it is going to be forwarded. You all know that router R1 is going to have its routing table and on the basis of that it is creating, it is forwarding the packet. But actually, now the point is little different. We want to understand what is my, uh, what is my uh, control plane and what is my data plane. So right now I am saying that uh, you haven't decided, you haven't created a static route because a static route means manual configuration and you do not want to do that. You are not logging into this router R1 and you are not going to say that R1, if you want to reach to Z dot Z dot Z dot zero, you should need to go to R3 first, which is going to be your next stop. So you are not writing this into R1, right? But still, R1 wants to know it. Okay. So, I am saying here R1 and R3. R3 specifically wants to share this route Z dot Z dot Z dot zero with R1, right? It means they should talk with each other. Right? Because if they are talking and, and if they are talking, they, uh, that should be in the same language. For example, if I take an example uh, from here, suppose I want to talk to Mr. Burak. Mr. Burak does not understand, maybe say Hindi, which is my language, and I do not understand uh, 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 maybe Turkish, which is Mr. Burak's native language. Right? If that is the case, then basically we cannot share information. It means that right now he is attending this class because we have a common language which is English and that is why he is able to get all the things. And I can understand what Mr. Burak is saying. Similarly, if R1 and R3 wants to share some information, right? They need to talk and they need to talk over the same language, right? And then basically those language rules are going to be same. And if I'm talking about rules, I'm talking about protocols. Protocol is just nothing but set of rules. And R1 and R3 both knows those set of rules, that language. It means that over this language or through this language, R3 can inform R1 that Z dot Z dot Z dot zero network is connected with connected to me. And that information is really, really crucial for R1. Because at the end of the day, R1 what is the duty of R1? R1 takes the IP packet, it sees the routing table and basically router 3 is giving it some information, right? To generate this route table, it means that this router R1, whenever it gets uh, this information, it takes that information on priority and it is going to put that information into its database that if it wants to reach to z dot z dot z dot zero it can reach via r3 and maybe it is going to give some more information to it and what is this this is an update from router 3 
update of what update of an route information if by any chance if this network goes down then also r3 is going to inform that mr r1 previously i was saying that z dot z dot z dot zero slash network is connected to me but now i am saying it is not connected to me right just update your database it is as simple as that right so basically now what i am saying is r1 and r3 is, uh, is talking and we are talking and and, and basically we are uh, mostly giving attention to r1 r1 is getting some information from r3 and because r1 duty is to create this routing table to make this routing table accurate all the time it takes these messages very uh, seriously all these messages right which are helping router one to build its routing table are control plane messages it is as simple as that so r3 uh, uh, r1 is getting a control plane message and believe me those control plane messages you know are pretty important so this router is going to have the processor right or the central processing unit which is going to take this packet pretty seriously whatever it is doing it is going to get it and it is going to install this into this database right which database the routing database which we just discussed here and inside this database it is going to write that it has a new information regarding z.z.0 slash 24 where it is going to be reachable from right if we talk about a specific protocol or the language which r1 and r3 is talking which we are going to discuss in this course also which is ospf so ospf if r1 and r3 knows this language ospf language or if they knows the rules of this ospf r3 is going to advertise some of its updates what is the meaning of update it is going to advertise that z dot z dot z dot zero route is connected to it via link state advertisement if you never heard about it that is perfectly fine because we are going to go detail when we talk about ospf but try to understand what we are learning here we are learning in this course ospf vgp and mpls ospf is a protocol meant it's a language and it should be understandable by both the routers means r1 should understand ospf r3 should understand ospf and if they understand they can talk right and they are talking over this specific language or we can say basically if r3 wants to share some information it is going, going to give this lsa and basically this lsas are going to be in this database of routing right maybe any other routing protocol is also running between these two eigrp right and eigrp is sending some routing updates right that may be stored in another database for eigrp so maybe this top topology this top this database table is or this database is for ospf this is for eigrp maybe something for bgp also right so basically if there are different languages these routers are talking about they want to share some information and generally what they share they share what routes i know from my perspective right and in, interestingly in the upper box all these informations are taken care of pretty seriously right interesting then this database if i assume that it is going to contain all the information right which route where to reach everything and then we can generate a routing table out of it maybe it can take some route from ospf it can take some route from eigrp whatever is the best maybe on the basis of ad metric we are going to discuss it but you can understand that basically this database is going to generate the route table or the routing table and believe me 
whatever we are talking about in terms of updates in terms of this uh, topology database whatever we have we are creating and this route table all are exactly part of your control plane because you are getting information right you are creating a table which is eventually uh, forwarding your packets right so here in the upper uh, box of this router i can straight away say that if you want to read to z dot z dot z dot zero slash 24 you can reach via zero slash two or basically i can say uh, uh, or basically you can say you can reach via r3 which is going to be your next hop right and what is this this is a route table entry so all the control plane messages maybe it's an lsa or any update or the database or the routing table comes under your control plane right and control plane informations are really really pretty serious because it is actually building your uh, uh, your routing right or your routing table and now you are you can argue with me that tk i we we all understand that the upper box is actually your control plane because it is generating it is getting the control plane information and from that control plane information it is generating the routing table but what is this lower part and interestingly i have written routing table there also but actually this is your forwarding information base now generally i do not take name unless i specify the uh, the the uh, concept behind it right so basically the upper box is uh, your way of creating or you are you are informing this router that if you want to send this packet then basically you can send this packet uh, uh, towards z dot z dot z dot zero uh, via this router art but does this information is complete can we just forward the base uh, 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 the packet on the basis of this information and you can straight away say absolutely yes right but let's see what are the problems this router is going to face when it is going to use this route table which is in the control plane you all know about it then when this ip packet and this is very very important concept guys and if you do not get it please do ask we have an ip packet here right which is reached at fa0 slash one interface and you all know about it that it is going to have this source mac and destination mac right i am taking a path that i am not going to use the lower means i haven't discussed even the lower uh, rectangular box what i am going to do i am just going to use basically the upper rectangular box to forward this packet right because i have divided this router into two parts source mac is going to be this one destination uh, mac we do not uh, uh, so uh, the destination mac is going to be fa0 slash one interface when this route is uh, when this uh, packet is received here the 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 host sorry the router is going to uh, take out the ip packet and it is going to see the routing table which is in the control plane which says that if you want to reach to z dot z dot z dot 10 you can go over 0 slash 2 interface and router r3 this router is pretty happy that now it can definitely send this packet right here right over the fp 0 slash 2 interface but can this router forward this packet x dot x dot x dot x and z dot z dot z dot 10 over fa0 slash 2 no absolutely no unless it can create this header means source mac and destination mac source mac is going to be pretty easy right maybe the uh, address associated with this fa0 slash 2 which is maybe say b or uh, uh, a colon a colon a so it can write it right here but to do the destination mac it has to do the r right and if if it has to do the r then this packet is going to be in the memory of this router right 
this is not the efficient way of doing right so although upper path if i showcase you with the maybe with red color so the packet is going to be right inside this right and i'm i'm considering there, there is no nothing in the uh, basically that lower rectangular box it is going towards this routing table in the upper corner and it gets stuck there because it is doing the R. I'm not saying it is get uh, it is going to stuck there uh, infinitely. Unless it gets the R response, it is going to be here in the router's memory. And then when it gets the response, it will be filling this destination MAC address and it is going to forward this IP packet right here. It is as simple as that, right? But don't you think that it is going to be more efficient if we can calculate this destination MAC address in advance? Because we know that route table says that if you need to send this package to uh, Z.Z.Z.0, .Z .Z you need to send it towards R3, right? R3 is going to say having some IP address, maybe 192.168.1.1. Then suppose right where was the problem the problem was the processor has to take has to do the uh, address resolution protocol right and the packet got stuck in the memory unless it gets the reply back so wouldn't it be uh, great that doesn't matter whether the packet is coming or not i can do a resolution of the next hop which is 192 1.10 and basically what we are doing here is we are copying this routing table whatever we have generated as it is here right this is going to be my routing table and i am making this routing table slightly efficient right i am arranging its route on what basis on what algorithm we uh, actually we are talking about a uh, now Cisco Express forwarding, whatever the route this route table has, it this guy we we are copying it from the control plane to this lower box now. And interestingly, whatever the route we have, right? For example, z dot z dot z dot zero is reachable via 192.168.1.10. We know the next stop is this. At the same time, whenever we copy these routing tables into the lower part of the router the lower rectangular portion we are also doing r it means that we are also maintaining r doesn't matter whether the packet came or not but we know in advance that if a packet come to z dot z dot z dot zero i do not want to store in the memory because i i want to send it to as soon as possible to 192.168.1.10 so i am doing the arp right now doesn't matter packet has come or not i am doing the uh, arp right now and suppose the mac address associated with this 1.10 is c colon c colon c i am going to write down here that this is my c colon c colon c the next hop mac address i have already calculated right and basically this is also known as your adjacency table so in the lower part of this router i am having the same routing table along with the adjacency table what is the meaning of adjacency the meaning of adjacency is just uh, although it has it contains few more information but the adjacency table means what is the mac address associated with these next stop and maybe these next stops are many because you are you you have many uh, uh, routing table entries but whenever you are copying those entries from uh, uh, from control plane towards this lower portion you are doing an arc right now it is pretty interesting to see that this if this packet comes right i do not need to consult the route table in the uh, uh, in the upper portion of this router right because when i go and consult route table in the upper portion it does not have any adjacency table there it does not know what is the mac address of my next hop so basically i go and interrupt this router uh, interrupt this processor 
interrupt means uh, whatever it is doing maybe it is busy in gearing some of the routing updates but i am saying that mr processor mr router processor do not i want to forward this packet leave whatever you are doing just tell me what is the mac address associated with it and the processor is going to get busy in that right this is not the efficient way of routing. So what I'm doing is I'm copying this route table into the uh, lower part and I am resolving the MAC addresses also. So now the packet comes, right? The packet comes with this z.z.z.10. .z .z Instead of looking and going into the control pane and routing table, I am just seeing the whatever the routing table we have here. We are seeing the next stop is this one. And interestingly, we have the adjacency table or the R resolve for it and i can straight away write that this packet should go c colon c colon c and now if i show you the traffic path with this blue color the path can be like this straight right no need of storing packet into the memory it can go straight away and actually this is your data plane okay data plane is responsible for sending packets as fast as possible. And basically this was your processor. Everything, whatever we implement in the data plane is in hardware. So all these information, right? The route table. And now basically because this is part of my forwarding engine, I'm not calling it a uh, uh, Forwarding means what? You are taking a packet and you are as soon as uh, uh, sending it to another interface, right? And that is why we are calling whatever the route table and the uh, whatever the route table we are at the lower part of the uh, uh, this router we are calling it as a forwarding information base and the upper part was actually your route table or we call it as a routing information base which is formed from these databases and how these databases form these databases are formed from the control plane information from uh, this router is getting from r3 the lower path is highly efficient guys because you have all the information needed to switch this packet into the hardware itself so the most of the things basically here is implemented in hardware and hardware is much more efficient if you give it all the things it is going to switch your packet as soon as possible switching means if it is going to take the packet at the fp0 slash one interface consult this route uh, uh, forwarding information base it has all the information for the packet rewrite it has source mac destination mac because it has already done the arp and you can straight away forward this as simple as that but i'm not saying that basically all the packet can be uh, switched in this way direction right but most of the packet because router uh, through router most of the packet is traversing this router from here to here and if that is the case then basically you can do it in the hardware but the traffic directed towards this uh, 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 towards this router some maybe it get the routing update should go directly into this processor right so the upper portion which is building how you are going to forward the packet is control plane the lower portion which is actually forwarding your packets in the hardware it is your database and this approach is also known as cisco express forwarding suppose if if this lower portion was never there what is going to happen all the times right just try to understand from this diagram what is going to happen we have a router here right the lower portion is not there this is the upper portion the packet comes here the ip packet right we are having the cpu here of this router which is busy in getting control in plain information it is creating this database of routing then the routing table and so many things right this packet comes this packet is not going to be complete uh, uh, you cannot send it over this interface unless you have destination r or the destination uh, MAC address of the next stop. If you don't have it, then basically the, when, the, whenever this packet comes, this is going to go directly into this, uh, uh, the IP packet is saved in the memory and it is going to say, Mr. CPU, whatever you are doing, just stop it. I'm sending you an interrupt. The meaning is I'm interrupting you from doing whatever you want, right? 
and generally how cpu works so if you if you consider your laptop right it has a central processing unit and basically at one time it is busy with one only one activity you can argue with me it is not the case mr vishnu i can hear music and i can run gns i can open notepad at once but believe me basically what the cpu is doing if you have open multiple application the cpu is giving a little time to this music some time to this gns and the time is in microsecond you, your mind cannot process it so you think that cpu is doing parallel processing at one time but it is not it is just giving some small chunk of time to all this application one by one right so if a control plane packet reach to the cpu it has to give its time and suppose there are many routers are sending this information to this guy so cpu is busy right but as you know the router main job is to switch the packets that to take the packet from one interface and switch it to the another interface and if it is not doing then it's a problem and the second main job is to create the routing and both are important now you are interrupting the, the cpu and by the way guys this interrupt is the technical term right but you want you can understand the meaning you are interrupting the cpu that mr cpu whatever you are doing just stop just give me some time so that i can switch this packet i can forward this ip packet can you do an arc for me so that i can know what is the next hop mac address so that i can send this ip packet over this interface and here is the problem if this is one packet that is fine if it's two packet that is fine but what is going to happen when you have packet in in thousands or in maybe in lakhs right which are coming over this router interface again and again you are interrupting the cpu to do the arc it's a problem right maybe it is working on an important control plane update then ospf is sending some information which is saying this this route is not available and you are sending the packet you are interrupt you did not get that information because the cpu was busy in doing r for or many other operations right and that is why they have introduced the lower part that can we do previously basically your uh, the route table actually is your data plane right which was here but now what they are doing is uh, let's leave this route table here we are creating our own data plane which is actually built on this route table so whatever the route table is here we are going to copy it and we are making it efficient and we are calling it forwarding information base right along with that we have adjacency table and believe me this lower portion where you are able to successfully switch the packet inside the hardware so all these things are going right uh, right down into the hardware hardware is pretty fast as compared to cpu because you are not consulting anything you are getting the packet you are seeing the table and then you are just forwarding it this portion is your data plane as simple as that and why basically it is so important in today's world because most of the uh, most of the new technologies like software defined networking right in which basically sd when if you talk about aci they are doing they are actually separating this control plane or the main motive of sdn is to separate this control plane from data plane the control plane is doing all the thinking right data plane is actually switching the packet so can we separate maybe if we have thousands of router is it advisable to have control plane and data plane for on all these router or can we separate the control plane from all these router into one thing and these routers contain only data plane and what is the advantages of it maybe that is a uh, that is a discussion of some uh, other uh, other time but i am just giving you information about control plane this is actually important guys right because most of the time uh, people are confused with this terminology it is very simple data plane is where exactly you are forwarding control plane is something or uh, which is which is creating that information to forward the packet it is as simple as that having said that this is what although i want to cover virtual routing also today but i won't be because otherwise it is going to be too heavy 
I would advise you to have a look at this recording also. But before that, just raise your uh, hands. I think I uh, I see uh, some uh, hand raises. Hand raise. Uh, so, Mr. Mohit, could you please ask your question? Mohit Juneja. Yeah, Vishnu. Mm -hmm. So, Vishnu, what you mentioned here is like I believe you were uh, differentiating what is control plane and uh, data plane. Yeah. Uh, but I never, you know, mapped it with root processor and FIB. So what you are saying is root processor, which is one of the component in router, which is uh, handling control plane part, of, right? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to data plane part, FIB, the forwarding uh, engine base is your data plane. Yeah. That's, that's the right understanding what I've got. Absolutely. Right? You are, uh, you are hitting the bullseye. That's what I wanted to explain. And uh, because and and Ceph is the basically same concept. FIB yes. is Ceph or like it's a it's a concept which talks about FIB. Yeah, the previously basically the the routing uh, when we were forwarding packet was not efficient and we introduced this Ceph. Somebody says that we need to uh, make sure this route table is more efficient, right? So they rearrange these uh, uh, routes into the routing table. Uh, sorry, they rearrange some routes in a specific format so that we can find the route easily. And somebody say that combine address resolution protocol information also. So this is exactly your Ceph, whatever we are doing in the lower portion of your uh, of this router, which we are also calling as data plane. Okay, so when we are talking about FIB or Ceph, okay, the new kind of table being generated. Yeah. Okay. And that uh, basically, that's where your ARP is also associated yep. with the next hop. You are right. And that makes the that that's that makes the uh, movement of the packets faster. You are right. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, I can see a hand raised for from Rajasekran Prakashji. Please please do ask your question. Uh, so this uh, static routes uh, hit don't hit uh, this uh, route processor uh, directly go to the routing. Actually, uh, it is again an information which should go into the routing information base, right? Whatever we are doing here in forwarding information base, right? We are just copying whatever the routes we have and we are rearranging in an efficient way. So the static routing information should go into the rib. But yes, uh, basically, uh, uh, these databases which are meant for the which are meant I think only for the uh, dynamic routing doesn't have to okay. deal with them. Okay. 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 Uh, now Mr. Burak, I think uh, before Burak, uh, Santosh ji, yes, please ask your question. Santosh Tiwari ji. Yeah, yeah, Vishnu. So my question is, I mean, as you mentioned, safe, safe is vendor specific, right? It's mm -hmm. not general statement. Yeah, Bilkul, you're right. So you wanted to ask that what is going to happen in Juniper routers or other routers, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Because I mean, we are talking about Ceph. Ceph is, I think, it's Cisco Express forwarding. You are right. right. You are right. So Santosh ji, Sorry. every company, whether it's uh, it's Juniper or any company which is creating these mm -hmm. routers, right, has some mm -hmm. specific thing here, and that is why basically I didn't want to take the name Ceph. Generally, they want to switch packets as soon as possible in the hardware right and mm -hmm. maybe juniper is calling the same thing with some other name i am not not sure about it but yes juniper might be juniper is also using the same thing where they are yes. having this complete but the process is going to be same every company every vendor wants to switch this packet as soon as possible the ip packet from source to destination right and it's the job mm -hmm. of router how they are doing it maybe because we get stuck when we do ARP. So they are basically creating the uh, adjacency table along with the route table. They combine it and they are saying that this is your data plane because now they can, they are fully able to switch the packet in the hardware itself. Okay. So that adjacency table and the route table are in each and every situation, each and every vendor is the same, like where you configured, I mean, where you used FIB. See, I, I, I cannot comment on other vendors because believe me, my knowledge is limited with respect to other. Implementation details can be changed, but the basic idea is going to be the same. You got it. Okay. 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 
Uh, Mr. Burak, do you have any any question? Yes, Vishnu. Mm -hmm. uh, why the uh, router doesn't write this information, uh, such as uh, ARP results, which is coming for, uh, from agency uh, table, uh, write this information directly uh, to the routing table? We can, but basically, we uh, generally what we want, and that is basically your uh, era of next generation is coming where basically we are talking about sd -WAN. and if you have seen that basically what is going to happen if we can just remove this control plane from this router if we remove this control plane then all the information is there right we need to uh, uh, we need to the packet which are coming to this router which does not have control plane are then going to send every packet to the uh, control plane right this was only data plane in this router right so i think and most of the time uh, the distinction should be there and now i have explained you pretty uh, simple uh, uh, architecture of a router but believe me as there are many line cards there are many uh, things in the particular router they are using a distributed approach means even this fib is also available for every line card every line card is going to having this fib so to answer your questions yes Previously, that was the case. Everything was in routing information base. Uh, but what we are doing is uh, right now we are actually doing everything in hardware. So what we are doing here, RIP is basically your software concept, right? Routing information base is your software is maintaining the table. But when I say the data plane part, actually whatever is written in this in, uh, software, right? Uh, as a result of uh, those routing updates, which is your RIP, I am actually program it into those ASIC, right? Application specific, I think I am ASIC are uh, basically your uh, uh, Integr integrated circuit. Yes, so basically those are pretty fast, right? And those are application specific, right? So basically I have made an ASIC which is my application specific so that it is switching those as soon as possible and I am giving all the information are here in the hardware itself so that it can be switched but the as you can understand software are slow as compared to hardware so that is why there is a whole soul point of having this data plane completely implement, uh, implemented into the hardware and uh, uh, rib basically is your software part software is always slower as compared to hardware okay mm -hmm. okay thank you Yes, so do we have any? Yes, I have. We have a question from Sumit Sharma ji. Uh, please do ask your question. Hello. Yeah. So my, my question is how frequently this is updated. I mean, the uh, the data plane, the forwarding information it, base. It's a, again a pretty good question. Whenever there is a routing change, we have to make sure that RIB is changing. Right, routing information base is changing, and whenever there yeah. is a change in RIB, there is going to be change in FIB. Otherwise, these two should be in sync always. Otherwise, there is a problem. Suppose R3 is saying that previously I was advertising you Z dot Z dot Z dot zero, which was reachable, but now somebody has came and shut down this interface. Right? Then R3 is going to uh, uh, in, uh, uh, inform all these things you, uh, using the updates. To this guy r1 right and r1 is immediately uh, taking consideration into it is going to remove this route from rib right and try to understand if this route is not removed in fib the packets which are coming it is going directly means it is coming to fa0 slash 1 it is going to fa0 slash 2 right so whenever there is a change in the rib it is going to be changed in the fib also Okay, so it's base basically depends upon the behavior of the protocol running. You are right. How frequently you are right. Okay, it's sending updates. Yes. Okay, and one more question: the SEP is a separate table, right? It is a com combination of routing table plus urgency urgency table, but it's a separate table. You right? got it right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So having said that, let's meet tomorrow at the same time to discuss some of the virtual routing and multicast okay we are going to discuss and believe me multicast topic is going to be uh, pretty easy right but it is a different approach uh, of uh, ascending packets 
so it is going to be pretty interesting tomorrow's uh, uh, if we if we finish virtual routing portion quickly then uh, we are going to start at least layer to uh, multicast it is going to be easy for you having said that thank you so much uh, for being here see you tomorrow at the same time bye for now thank you thank you